Yeah. All right. All right. Welcome back to the Contrarians. We have another showcase episode for you today. So our showcase series is where we try to shine a spotlight on some of the folks that contribute to our panels so we can get to know them better. And a lot of these folks have their own channels and today is no different. So we get to hear what their channels are all about. So I want to welcome Joe. Thanks, Joe, for joining us. Thanks, Marco. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. All right. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Uh, yeah. Busy day, but I'm back here to talk to you, and it's uh, good. Aside from Poland losing to Argentina right now because they're one of my teams, but you know that's that's pretty my that's minute in uh, uh, the the grander scheme of things. So, well, we're glad you made it, even going through such a tough time as that. So, thanks for <laughs> thanks for joining us today. Yeah. So, this yeah. is Joe. Joe jumps on our our, um, our chats quite a bit, and Joe has his own channel, Average Joe's. Um, so what made you decide to start your own right. channel? Uh, you. <laughs> Honestly, it was you. Um, I, you know, I had fun and, and uh, I was, you know, I toyed with, um, I actually did a podcast that was industry related and it was getting absolutely no traction, although I got some great guests. So I, I stopped doing that a couple of years ago and I was really, uh, and I was, I was like, what's, it was pointless. I had fun doing it. And then I, I got to the point where I was, uh, I hired a social media guy and, and uh, I was doing some episodes in a studio and still I wasn't getting any traction, wow, but that was industry know. related. That was logistics and it was called logical logistics. So, uh, but I've always enjoyed it. I mean, I, I did radio in college and uh, a little bit on the side um, professionally. Uh, I, I covered boxing about 20 years ago on a station in Chicago but uh, yeah, so I, I had a lot of fun. You know, I was having a great time on the Contrarians, and you suggest that I start my own channel. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm going to call Average Joe and just talk about what interests me. And I was able to score, um, uh, what's his name? The guy from Motley Crue, the guy, uh, uh, John Karabi. Stepped in his, yeah, yeah. John Karabi, I was able to get his inter an interview like right off the bat because that was kind of industry related too. I found out he he was he had a CDL license and was driving commercial truck uh, during his professional career during uh, on, during his book while reading his book. So he was he wanted to interview me, you know, he, he wanted to have an interview about that. So that kicked it off right from the beginning. But you were the uh, guy who prodded me to go ahead and do it, and so I said, "All right, I'm going to do it." Wow, thank you. I appreciate that a lot. So yeah, no, average Joe's average Joe's doesn't just focus on music. So, like, what are some of the things you can expect if you jump over to average Joe's? I mean, I, anything, it's basically anything that interests me. So right now it's been basically uh sports, a lot of boxing. So John the music nut cop hops on because just by happenstance, he uh he's a huge boxing fan like I am. In fact, he probably probably even more so. He watches more of the fights than I do. So it was great to talk to him about it. And that kind of echoes the show I used to do in Chicago. So it's great to talk about that. And uh, I love it. Um, you know, and, and other sports that interest me, you, you know, I have a, my, well, my, my MLB expert actually was my son who played in the minors. My soccer expert is my other son who played uh, college soccer. And then uh, the hockey expert is actually a son of a guy who's in a very popular podcast. And I connected with him and he said, you got to talk to my son. He played in high school and he coaches a high school team. So he, he became my NHL expert. So, yeah, we talk about that. And there's other topics I want to cover. So I'm hoping to do that. But the interviews I love, I'm trying to schedule a couple more. I'm, I'm going through some management um, uh Actually, Grand Funk is playing like two blocks from my house, which is unbelievable because I live amazing. in a really small. Yeah, I live in a small community, but they book some big acts at this community center, so I'm trying to get them scheduled. But uh, like the the West Beach, uh, you know, through you, and then uh, another guy I had on my channel, I was able to get his interview. So I do that, and we talk about music as well. And I have some of the Contrarians on, and some other guys that I know, and whatever interests me and other people. Um, you know, it, 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 I definitely don't lack for content going that way. Yeah. I've, I've seen some of your interviews and that that's exciting. Um, yeah. The interviews are great. And I just had Martin on uh, uh, spoiler alert. So he'll be, I'll post that next week. And that, that was fun. We had a topic that we covered and then uh, yeah, West beach was great. Uh, John Karabi and I'm hoping to get a few more interviews on there. 
um, going through management. Rick Derringer, I think, lives like a couple miles from me, and I'm trying to get him on. I want to, I want, I just want to talk to him about Derringer Live because that's one of my favorite live albums of all time. A topic we covered on the Contrarians. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I and I love Grand Funk. Are you like a, yeah. a Grand Funk fan, or did you join? Like, were you, did you jump on the bandwagon when Bruce jumped over to Grand? No, Funk? I, I I was I was a casual fan. Uh, Shine and I was my first album. Nice. But, you know, I was in the, but I didn't, you know, Kiss was the band that got me full blown and everything. So I like them, um, but they're so much fun live because, well, Bruce is there. And if you show up in the first row and have a Kiss shirt on, he throws picks at you and he's so cool. And I met him once and he's such a great guy. And then, uh, but, but the show is fun. I mean, it's hit after hit after hit. And they brought in the guy from 38 Special. So he sings his big hit. And then, uh, but it's great, you know, and then there's a big, uh, the one guy uh, was a brewer and the other guy, uh, I think Brewer's the drummer. He still brings it. He has a great drum solo and Bruce has a fantastic guitar solo and he plays the Star Spangled Banner. And it's just fun. It's just, I've seen this incarnation a few times and it's a blast. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, I, yeah. I had a few, I had like five, five Grand Funk uh, Real World albums. And maybe six. I, I think I, I had one or two live ones too. Caught in the act. I had a few Grand yeah. Funk albums. Great, all of them. Even even like Phoenix, which is like ranked pretty low in their discography. That was a great album. I, I love Grand right. Funk Railroad. Um, yeah. uh, I was going to ask you. So obviously, you you have a love of music. So like, what are some of the the bands and genres that you you like listening to the most? Okay, so this it's that's such a loaded question because it changes so much, you know, and I had a briefly a conversation with Martin yesterday about how I just love how his, he brought in his horizons. And I think his five songs today uh, explains some of that as well. But um, well, one is this band. Um, I didn't get into them. I mean, I, I was always into them, but I didn't get into them until about 10 years ago. And that was because of one of my sons. And I literally liked the uh, album that came out. That was uh, what 10,000 or hundred thousand days. But when this latest album, uh, Fear Inoculum, came out, I listened to it constantly. I just listened to it before, uh, on the way back from where I was working out to before our interview. So this is one of them. My gateway bands were Kiss and Aerosmith. Uh, Kiss Alive and Aerosmith Rocks were the two albums that I was full in. Uh, I was like, okay, I, this is my type of music. I was huge in the... Every type of hard rock, uh, but it changes all the time. Mot I'm talking, I'm thinking about game changers. I think the first time I heard a Motorhead Ace of Spades, the album, I was like, what am I listening to? This is incredible. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 everything, I, you know, mostly heavy metal. I was big into the new wave of British heavy metal. Um, I, I like the Seattle scene. Uh, Soundgarden, I love. Super Unknown is one of my favorite albums and Bad Motor Finger is not, too far behind and stone temple pilots from the 90s you know that purple album i love so it my i just if it rocks and i like it i like it sex pistols another band so you know it, it it's it's all good for me uh you know there's bands i don't get into but but um yeah those those are the, it, it changes so much but those are the main bands right now that i can think of do you collect I, you know what's that do you collect music and do you have a Holy Grail and do you own it? Okay. So uh, I had a thousands of vinyl and the second house my wife and I bought, I sold it all. I, I kept a few precious ones. I never thought who thought vinyl would come back. Right. Right. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here and there trying to get back um, some of the vinyl that I had. Uh, as far as Holy Grail, uh, I don't know if anything's really out there that, I, you know, that I don't have, you know, like the original Leather Records pressing of Too Fast for Love was one of my Holy Grails because I, I was writing for fanzines back then. I, I wrote for Brian, I would write reviews for Brian Slagle and then another guy, Bob Muldowney out in, uh, Bob Muldowney out in New York, Kick-Ass Monthly. And then there was another guy, um, Ron Quintana. He's the guy actually... Uh, named Metallica so I'd write for his fanzine to you know concert reviews record reviews so uh, I you know there was an ad in in Brian Slagle's uh, thing about this band called Motley Crue and I was like what am I looking at and I ordered I, I think I was I had to be the first guy in Chicago to have Too Fast for Love I had the leather records pressing so I kept that 
that's definitely probably my most valued uh, record. But let me tell you something. This c- creature's box set that just came arrived at my door two days ago. That ranks up there. It gave me the chills because let me. I- I'll tell you what. That album was such a comeback for me. And it was even better. I know Kiss was on hard times at the time, but it was kind of cool because it was like our band again. It wasn't this super popular band that they became again, once again, you know, or in the seventies, you know, like they are now, but it was like, okay, they fit in with sex and they fit in with Iron Maiden. They fit in with uh, the Motley Crews and the early Twisted Sisters and Riot and bands like that. So not a lot of people, they weren't really popular, but this album, it was great. And then the best concert I ever went to was them and the Plasmatics in Dubuque. And they have a picture of the poster of that show in the book. So uh, Julian Gill, the, I, I think he's responsible for that. And Mark Cicchini, those are the you know, two of the big Kiss guys. Uh, whoever's responsible for that, thank you for putting that poster in there. Yeah, I've seen the box set and they give you your money's worth. There's tons oh, of it's, stuff. It's incredible. In yeah, it's incredible. They, you know, as you know, as a Kiss fan, there's uh, times where they <laughs> they disappoint to <you> buy. <laughs> and yeah. then there's times where they come through and hit a home run and then you they suck you back in and they just suck me back in with this one. It's incredible. Absolutely. Um, yeah. What's something that you're very contrarian on? Uh, very contrarian on. Um, it's hard to. Well, <laughs> I mean, where do you want me to go? Like, I, I, I don't like the Who. I like, I can't stand the Who. I can't stand Bruce Springsteen. I don't know if that's contrarian or not, but there's certain really popular acts that I just don't like at all. Now, that being said, I did do a 180 on Fleetwood Mac. I actually like him a lot. Christine McVie, rest in peace. You just right. passed. I just yeah. read that right before we jumped on. But um, you know. I'll, my parents would listen. My parents got in like to the Eagles and and uh, the band and all that crap. And there's certain bands where it's like my parents' music, and I just can't. I still can't do. Can't stand the Grateful Dead. <laughs> so I don't know if that's contrarian, but I don't get it. I think JJ French from Twisted Sister described it the best. He loved the Grateful Dead, and then when he quit doing drugs, it was the worst music he ever heard. <laughs> So I don't know. I don't know if that's contrarian. One thing I, I don't know if this is contrarian as well, but one thing um, is my weakness. And we've talked about this in the past. Um, if there's a female singer, nine out of 10 times I'm hooked in. So I love Kelly Clarkson. I love uh, Gwen Stefani and no doubt. I love heart. I mean, they have a feet, Carrie Underwood. I'm in like, it, I don't know if it, it just, it just, I don't know. It just brings Annie Lennox, you know, so nine out of 10 times, if there's a female singer, I'm hooked. So that's maybe that's a contrarian thing because that's kind of out of my wheelhouse with the the other bands I've described, you know. The yeah, you're bands. you're Sabbath fan. Love Sabbath. If yeah. You, I've um, seen him, sorry, go ahead. No, I've seen him twice with Dio, uh, once with Gillen and, and a couple times with Ozzy. So, yeah. Yeah, I would look up a band called Stonefield. They're a female okay. Uh, grungy kind of doomy metal band i think you okay. like them i saw them live and they right. were amazing i didn't like i went to go oh. see king gizzard and the lizard wizard and they opened up and they were amazing i'm a big fan of theirs um excellent so we know you're a big fan of music we know you love sports yes what's something that we don't yes. know about you well don't know about me um well i don't know how much i want to divulge um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see uh, well, you're not under oath, uh, so <laughs> some you're not being deposed. There's a lot, there's so much I can, you know. You put me on a spot. I'm kind of like choking here. Um, I have run in the quite a few like celebrities and rock stars just by. I've run in the, I've done the meet and greets, but I've done just by like I, I met Joe Biden. Like, I was wow. in Las Vegas for a boxing match, and they had the Democratic debate the night before. And Joe Biden was standing next to me and I just said, hi, my name's Joe, too. And he was very, very nice. I, you know, I don't want to get political here, but um, whether you stand or not, he was very nice to me. So, yeah. And like I was on a plane with I was actually flying out of Winnipeg and Julia Roberts was on my plane. Like her husband was filming a movie with Sean Penn up in Winnipeg. So I've, I've had a lot of chance encounters like that. But uh, 
yeah, it, I, something else that I don't know. You know, music is um, a very interesting part of my life because uh, I love it. It was a big escape for me. Uh, actually, playing it, um, I actually was not bad as an organ player. My dad was like an incredible organ and accordion player but he was old school and he would stand over me. And if I made a mistake, he'd smack me upside the head. So as soon as I had the opportunity, I was out and I didn't play anything until later, uh, you know, till after like college, I picked up the guitar, which I've always wanted to play. So I play guitar. I'm not very good, but it's fun, you know? Um, but there's so many other things that, yeah, I, I guess that's a couple of things that I could throw out there. If I think of something else during our interview, I'll throw it out there or put it in the comments. But yeah, uh, it's funny. I'm picturing Joe Biden on Average Joe's. That would be an amazing interview. Do you have? Yeah, that'd be cool. It, is, if you could I'd actually rather have Hunter on, he seems like more fun. But <laughs> <laughs> if, if you could book anybody for Average Joe's, who would your ultimate guest be? My ultimate guest. Let's see. Uh, you know, I, I mean, Jimmy Page, maybe, uh, but I don't know how interesting it would be, you know, just like, I, you know, Steven Tyler or Joe Perry, for sure, or even any member of Aerosmith, honestly, I would like to talk to. I Even Jimmy Crespo, I would love to. Um, but I know a home run would be Gene Simmons, because I've met him three times, and every time he's awesome. So if I wanted to go the safe route, it would be Gene Simmons in a heartbeat because he's just he's just a great guy. I, I don't care what anyone I, every time I met him, I met him one time. It was it was a, I think it was like 20 bucks to buy his book. And he just gave everybody the time of day and he was awesome. So I would love to talk to him. But, yeah, the guys in Aerosmith, I would definitely want to talk to. But I would want to really dig deep into, uh, you know, the. The original, because I was part of the original Blue Army, you know, and and why they don't play certain songs live, and 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 a few other things I'd like to talk about. If they could really open up, I would really like to talk to them. I met Joe Perry once, and it wasn't really that great, but uh, if I could really have him open up, I think uh, the guys from Aerosmith for sure. I would have loved to have talked to Lemmy, but he, you know, he doesn't. Um, he's no longer with us. But those are the ones I could think of. Uh, you know, it, it, you know, the plasmatics thing, I talked to West Beach and he was a bucket list, but I would really like to talk to Rod Swenson because he he actually managed the band and had a really close relationship with Wendy Williams. So that would be another one. Very cool. Are you an MMA fan? Yes, I am. In fact, I was supposed to go um, to Vegas next week, but the main event canceled and uh kudos to the ufc they offered a full discount a full refund and since my my friend who was originally supposed to go out there is no longer going i i decided to cancel and they refunded my ticket which is unheard of like they it was like that they offered it and i think a lot of that has to do with t-mobile too because we were supposed to go to a boxing match when pacquiao was supposed to fight um errol spence and errol spence had the eye injury and again t-mobile they refund like that. So it's unheard of now, but yeah. Cool. Yeah, I am uh, an MMA fan. So that was a long-winded answer, but yeah, I am. All right. I've got a few this or that kind of quick questions. I mean, you can Good. answer if you want to just okay. give me a one-word answer or explain your answer. Like, that's cool too. Are you ready? Okay. Tom Petty or yeah, Bob Dylan? It. Tom Petty. Black Hands down. Oh, sorry. I can't listen to Dylan Tom Petty. That's a pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Are you a Tom Petty yeah. fan? Uh, I wouldn't say a fan. My wife is a huge fan, but um, I wouldn't say I'm a fan. But there's some songs that really resonate with me, like "Learning to Fly" and "Free Falling." Those are just amazing songs. I've never gotten deep, but I love the greatest hits. I had a double CD greatest hits. Um, so it's more than just like a, a one CD greatest hits. And I love like every song, but I've never like really gone and listened to a Tom Petty album. But um, okay. Badlands or Black Label Society? Oh, man. 
uh, just because I would go black. La- I would go. I'd go Black Label Society because they have a bigger body of work. You know. Okay. Uh, I think the the quality is still there, and the quantity plus the quality. I have to go Black Label, and they're great live. Well, what if we go Jakey e. Lee or Zach Wild? So you could include Red Dragon Cartel and stuff like that. Just to even the playing field a bit. Well, in Ozzy, I, it's, it's Jakey e. Lee hands down for Ozzy. Um, I it, it's such a difficult question because I can't stand, as you know, I'm not a big fan of Zach in Ozzy, but I am a big fan of Black Label Society. Jakey, e. I would I'll go Jakey e. Lee just because of his work in Ozzy. And I think that his guitar playing is super original. Like it, it, it's one of those guitarists that can't be duplicated. In fact, he's gone on. He basically says that Zach Wilde does not to play bark of the moon. It, it's out there <laughs> properly. Yeah. I, I asked the form of this question to Peter too, but I'm interested to see what you think. Would you rather have a new Kiss studio album with the current lineup or a ticket to go see a reunion of the original lineup? I I like getting back together with the original lineup. Yeah. Would you rather have a new studio album with Tommy and Eric or would you rather go see Kiss with Peter and Ace live? Kiss with Peter and Ace live. Okay. Right on. Yeah, sure. Um, I, you you know, I, I, Kiss, like, they just play it. They play it too safe, you know, and I don't feel like they let they they pigeonhole Eric and Tommy in these roles in the last two albums to play. Like Tommy has to sing about space and Eric has to try to, you know what I mean? If I think if they let Tommy loose a little bit more and Eric sing her a little bit loose more and they would and they would get back the dangerous feel of creatures or the early albums, that'd be better. They have nothing to lose, but. I know they wouldn't do that, so I would rather see the original four once again. Would you rather see Kiss as they are now, or would you rather see Peter and Ace in a club somewhere doing a reunion thing, the two of them? Um, like, would you rather go see a Kiss show or a Peter and Ace show? Peter and Ace show because I've seen Kiss so many times in this, you know, so many times with this lineup. So yeah, it would be, cool. it would be unique you know it, as bad as ace has been actually peter in that nashville uh expo the creatures expo he actually looked pretty good and he played drums i thought he you know there's this like misnomer out there he can't like even play at all but he play you know he can play yeah yeah he's not sure. jason Bonham or you know or, or danny carey from tool but yeah he can play still yeah yeah, what I like about them is that they do some interesting songs. Like they'll do strange ways and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it would, yeah. I agree yeah, with yeah. you. That would be really cool to yeah. see something like that. Are you kiss alive one or kiss had, alive you know, two? If they had Ace's band, you know they can play anything. So that might be cool too. You know. Yeah. yeah. Kiss alive one or two. Oh, one. That's my. That's my one A and Rocks and Alive are my one A and one B. I it, they're they're tied for the albums that hooked me in. Alive is just perfect. What about Kiss Alive 3 or Kiss Alive 4? 3. 4. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Where's the symphony, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, Monday Monday Night it Wars. Sucks. Metallica suck too. And whatever. What, go on. <laughs> uh, Monday Night Wars. Nitro or Raw? Raw. Nice. I mean, raw back in the day, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because of rock in Austin. Rock is like my all time favorite. What he became was just, it was great. It was great. And Austin was cool too, but rock was like the ultimate and cool. And he was the ultimate promo. And, you know, he was hard hitting, but his finisher was the people's elbow, which was a nothing, but he, he <laughs> stole it like it was the most deadly finisher of all time. So, yeah, definitely. Okay, I got two more for you, and then I'm gonna let you wrap up. Tyson or right. Ali? Uh, I think I, um, Tyson. Oh, definitely Ali. Uh, Ty, I think Tyson was overrated. Honestly, he he beat a lot of tomato cans, and then when he finally ran in the Vander Hall of Field, people say, "Well, you know, he went to prison and all that." And you know, Buster Douglas beat the crap out of him. I'm sorry, but you you don't let your skills diminish like that. But you look at the guys he beat and. 
no one really no and there's a guy like tony tucker who actually took him the distance you know tony tucker right but you know michael spinks wasn't a heavyweight that was his big victory to get all the titles um you know he had a lot of those guys were just a mess trevor burbick and yeah a lot of paper you know that era between tyson and he when he fought larry holmes larry holmes was on the down really down on his career and uh you know, Larry Holmes still, I thought, gave him a good fight for a couple rounds. But Ali, you know, Ali fought everybody. He came from a different era. Ali took some beatings. You know, I, Ken Norton broke his jaw. George Foreman, I mean, what he did against George Foreman was absolutely amazing, honestly. That 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 fight alone blows my mind with Ali. But, uh, you know, Fre those wars with Frazier were incredible. So that was a whole golden era of boxing, for sure. But I think Tyson's way overrated. Yeah, do you like to see these guys come back? Like, remember the the Tyson um, Roy Jones fight, the exhibition a couple of years ago. Do you? Like uh, that to was see kind of fun. Like yeah, but that was an exhibition, so it was fun. I I was a huge Roy Jones. I was more of a Roy Jones fan than Tyson fan, but uh, it was it was fun to watch. I couldn't believe how gassed Roy Jones got, and Tyson was in incredible shape. So, but it was fun to watch. It, it is what it is. But some of these comebacks, yeah, you don't want to see it. It's kind of, you know, kind of sad. Are you yeah. last one for the quick this or that? Yes. Solid power trio or intricate large band like um like a Zappa thing or an E Street band, like like 10 or 12 players on stage. Are you a, a three-piece guy or do you want to see a large solid power, power trio because of rush? And I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat and say this is a solid power trio. I mean, I know Maynard's the you know, I guess I can't do it because he's Maynard's singing. But he stands up on the amps, and it's like watching Rush again. But um, I'm trying to think of another, like Triumph. Those, those are great albums. Solid Power Trio. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Joe, why don't you let us know where we can find you and uh, let us know what uh, you got coming up. Average Joe is here on The Contrarians. And uh, once in a while, I'm on Peter Kerr's channel, which is a, a blast. I love Peter. You know, bow to you. And, uh, yeah, that, that's where you could find me. One thing, you know, I mentioned I met Joe Biden. I also uh met i well, i stood next to gerald ford i at a golf outing i uh briefly met george bush the first and i think that's it for president i was at a soccer game but i was sitting across from bill clinton but uh <laughs> 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 so I you were <laughs> you're like Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, one thing, you know what i as i've told you i i am i have canadian blood in me my friends my mom's my grandma emigrated from poland to canada the rest of her family are still in hamilton and she came to chicago so that's another thing so uh yeah kudos to canada i love it i love toronto i love montreal even winnipeg was a lot of fun and i hope to see more of the country and hope to see you in person one day awesome joe i look forward to that we're gonna have a nice cigar and um anybody who's out there who likes our channel go over check out average joe's um a lot of these folks are putting up free content and they're putting up amazing content and joe's had a couple of really cool interviews so how often do you see west beach doing interviews on youtube and stuff like this so you know it you know it doesn't take much to go over and give a like and subscribe. And I know Joe will appreciate it and we would appreciate it too. So go follow average joe's and we'll see y'all next time. Thanks, Marco.